Hello, my name is Dr. Laist, and today I want to talk about documenting sources for research papers in MLA and APA styles. Uh, research is a very important part of the writing process, especially if you're writing a paper about um, some scientific trend, a political movement, uh, a debate or controversy that you want to uh, provide your own opinion about. In any of these cases, you want to make it clear that you've done your homework and that you know a lot about what you're writing about. So research, uh, including research in your paper, helps you not only learn about your topic, but also helps you to support your point of view as you make your, uh, as you write your essay. It helps you to establish the basic claims that you'll go on to build on over the course of your paper. Um, it, uh, using a specific quotation or a specific idea from a paper or article or a book gives you a starting point for agreeing or disagreeing with someone to help you uh, develop your own argument. And uh, most importantly, perhaps, uh, including research sources in your paper, helps you to convey your expertise. It shows that you've read up on the subject, that you know what other people have to say about it, and that you can contribute meaningfully to this ongoing conversation. Um, so doing the research is the hard part. Documenting your sources, explaining where your sources came from, is actually the easy part. Um, of course, it's very important to do this, however, because uh, you need, obviously, to explain where your information came from and make it clear that you're not just making up statistics, that you actually have a place where these statistics or quotations or other information came from. Uh, also, it's nice to give credit to the writers and researchers who came before you and who know uh, whose work you're probably building on. And uh, finally, and most importantly, uh, documenting your sources, your sources gives your readers an opportunity to follow up on your research and go back to the sources that you use to put together your paper and uh, do some of their own thinking about uh, those sources and maybe uh, go back and uh, and not just verify what you have to say, but also uh, understand the original context that the information that you're using came from. So all these are all very important reasons why it's necessary to document uh, the sources that you use in a paper. Now there are two main citation styles that are used in academic writing. They're known as MLA and APA. Um, MLA stands for Modern Language Association. This uh, format is typically used in English classes, your English 101 or 102 classes, um, in humanities classes, classes that have to do with art history or history or um, uh, music or culture, and uh, cultural studies. A lot of the debate uh, style papers that you write in 100 level English classes uh, typically will be written in MLA style. Uh, APA stands for American Psychological Association, as you can probably guess from the name. Uh, papers written in the discipline of psychology tend to be written in APA format, but the APA format is also used for the disciplines such as education, criminology, and a number of other uh, disciplines that are uh, social sciences. Um, many hard sciences also use the APA format. So generally, if it's like an art or culture thing, you're writing an MLA style, and MLA style is really suited for those kinds of papers. Um, if it's a scientific paper, either in the hard sciences or the soft sciences, chances are that you're going to be using APA. But there are also lots of other styles of citing sources. Uh, there's the Oxford style, Chicago style, the Harvard style, the ASI style. There are lots of other styles. Uh, if you have any questions about what style you should be using, your best policy is to ask your professor uh, what style to use. Um, but the important thing to know is that no matter what style you use, you have to do something. You have to use some standardized format for explaining where the information that you're using in your paper came from. Um, the good news is that even though there are all these different styles, they're all pretty similar. And if you can master any one of them, it'll be very easy for you to switch back and forth or to switch into a different style altogether as the need arises. So the important thing is to just learn one style or just have a sense that there are these different styles out there, but they're really not that complicated. Basically, as you'll see, they just involve providing basic information about where you got your information. Uh, the first step to 
citing your sources effectively and accurately is to always keep careful notes as you research. You should always have a notebook out in front of you, a pen in your hand, so that you can write down not only the specific quotations or uh, data or statistics that you want to include, that you, or that you might want to include in your paper, but also so that you can keep notes on the sources themselves, so that you can remember where you found the information, and so when it comes time to write your uh, to to uh, write your work cited page or your references page, you have that information at your fingertips, and you can use it. Uh, when you are doing research from books, obviously it's very important to know who the author of the book is, what the title of the book is, but also if it's um, an edited collection, you want to know who the editor is. If it's been translated from another language, you want to know who the translator is. Uh, there will always be a publisher, a city of publication, a year of publication, and, a, uh, and also if you're using a specific quotation or a specific piece of information, you want to be able to write down the page number where you got that information so it's easy to find again for you and whoever wants to follow up on your research. Um, if you are doing uh, research in a magazine or journal article, again, a lot of the same information. You want to know who the author is of the specific article that you are uh, looking at, what the title of the article is, the name of the magazine or journal or newspaper or other periodical that that um, information came out of, the date of publication, um, most uh, magazines or journals have an issue and or a volume number. You want to get as much of that information as you can. And of course, also the page number. Um, internet sources are a little more complicated because they are so diverse. There are so many different kinds of internet sources. So the first step when you are citing an internet source is to make sure that you know what kind of internet source it is. Is it a specific website? Is it an online journal or article? Is it from an online database? Make sure that you can identify what kind of source is, and that'll make it more likely that you will um, accurately cite the source. And then the next thing is to simply collect as much information as you can about the sources. Um, just like with uh, books or magazine articles, um, hopefully you can, you'll be able to find an author. If it's an authored piece, um, you want to try to find if there's a title to the uh, piece of uh, the piece of writing that you're specifically looking at you want to try to write that down um, if it's from an online publication or database you want to make sure you know what the title of the online publication or database is um, if you can find an address I'm sorry if you can find a, a date when the um, when the article you're looking at was originally posted to the web that can be a helpful thing to have one thing that you will always be able to find with a web address is obviously the URL address um, even though it's not always required to include the URL address, address in your uh, citation, as we'll go on to discuss, um, you want to write it down or at least keep a copy of it somewhere in your own notes so that you can get back to it. And then finally, a uh, unique thing about internet sources, um, you will want to write down the access date. Access date is simply the date that you actually found this information on the web. With web sources, they can come and go. Sometimes they disappear without warning. Um, it's helpful to have a record of when you actually accessed this information on the internet. So there are two parts of a citation. The in-text citation, as you can tell from the name, is the part of the citation that goes in the body of your paper, in your text. And so here's an example of this here. Uh, here's an essay about uh, sexism in college classes. This person uh, quoted a specific passage from some source. Um, they tell us in the text of the article that this is from the text of their paper that this is from uh, Wordsworth Fuller and from page number 20. This is an MLA style citation as we'll talk about in just a minute. And notice the important thing to notice here is that it's on the inside of the paper. It's actually included in the body of your paper. So right after I read this quote, I get this citation with the last name of the author and the page number. And then the other kind, the other part of a citation in both MLA and APA style is the end text citation. This is the this is a list of sources, an alphabetical list of sources that appears at the end of your paper. In MLA, it's called a works cited page. In APA, it's called a references page. But in both cases, it basically um, uses, it basically explains all the information that you need to find, you need to have in order to be able to locate this source again. So in the, in the in-text citation, you just include 
uh, enough information to be able uh, to allow your reader to find the source in your end text citation, and uh, that will direct them to all the other information that they need about the source, about the uh, you know uh, the title of the book or the journal article, the date it was published, the publication company, all that other stuff. So let's talk about specifics. Um, let's say I'm writing a sample paper on a perennially popular topic, the topic of bullying. And in my, uh, just as I'm putting the paper together, I know about bullying, I want to say uh, something about how widespread the problem is, why bullying is a, pro is a problem, and uh, what can be done about it. So that's my starting point, and I want to try to find research sources that touch on each of those main uh, research questions. So here's my first source that deals with the first question, how widespread is bullying? And I found this in Time Magazine, which is obviously a magazine, and I found a quotation about uh, some statistics about 9 out of 10 LGBT students say they have experienced bullying or harassment, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I wrote down that quotation. I think I'm going to use it in my paper, um, and it's from a magazine. So that's source number one. Source number two, uh, this is a quotation that specifically addresses the question of why bullying is a problem. And I actually found this in a book called Bullying Beyond the Schoolyard, uh, Preventing and Responding to Cyberbullying. Um, and uh, again, you see this is a long quotation that talks a little bit about uh, when presented with the opportunity to harass someone online, impulsive adolescents may be unable to hold back, etc., etc. So um, online bullying uh, can lead to all sorts of these negative behaviors. Uh, long quotation from a book, and this is my second source. And then finally, my third source, what can we do about bullying? Well, for this uh, research question, I was actually able to find a quotation from a journal article on an online database. Uh, I, this is a quotation from Dr. Mike Elsie, who's quoted as saying, bullying is usually thought of as a group process, blah, 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 blah. And notice I even took a picture of the screen where I found uh, this uh, information on this online database. So now I have all of my three sources, and I'm going to start off talking about how I would uh, document these sources in MLA style in the text of my paper, in the actual body of my paper. This is going to be my in-text citation. Um, in an in-text citation, in MLA style, all I need to supply are the author's name, the author's last name, and the page number where you found the information you are citing. So author's name, page number. Easy, easy, easy. This is the in-text citation. So here's an example uh, with our first source. That is a source from Time Magazine. Standard MLA text, uh, MLA style in-text citation. So here's that quotation from a few slides ago. 9 out of 10 LGBT students, et cetera, et cetera. And here's my in-text citation. Very short. Webley, that's the last name of the author of the article. 42, that was the page number on Time Magazine, in Time Magazine where I found the source. Um, and notice a couple of things. First of all, there's uh, the punctuation of this, uh, of this quotation works out as follows. When I, um, nor normally I would put the period here at the, end of the, uh, at the end of this quotation, I would put it inside the um, end quotation mark. But since I have this source here, the sentence won't actually end till the end of the source. So after the final, the second end parentheses here, that's where I'm going to put my period. Um, the other important uh, note that I want to draw your attention to is the fact that there's no comma in between Webley and 42. Uh, it's just a space there, just one single space. And that's all I need to do at the end of the uh, quotation. And now I have my source all set. All cited. My in-text citation is done for that source. Um, of course, if I'm writing about statistics, um, in, uh, as an alternative to spelling out the whole quotation word for word, I could simply take that same those same statistics and reformulate them in my own words. So, in a 2009 study of 7,261 middle and high school students. The Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network determined that 9 out of 10 students have experienced bullying or harassment. So those are my, that's not a direct quote from Time Magazine, it's my own words, but the uh, since I used this information from the source, I want to make sure that I cite it the same way. Notice that the citation is exactly the same. The sentence doesn't end at the end of the word harassment, it ends at the end of the citation, so that's where my period is on the outside of that in-text citation, and then I'm ready to start my next sentence. Um, some sources have two authors. If you'll notice from a few uh, 
slides ago, this book about bullying beyond the schoolyard, it actually has two sources, Samir Hinduja and Justin W. Patchen, as you can see in that picture on the uh, upper uh, right. So um, this is really easy with two authors. Um, it's the same as with a one author uh, source. I've got Hinduja and Patchen 72. I spell out and, no comma, between Patchen and 72, just a space. The period goes on the outside of the in-text citation, and that's all there is to citing that source. Um, now, sometimes when I cite a source, I will include the author's name in the text of my paper, in my own sentence. So here's an example. Um, instead of just uh, jumping right to this quotation, maybe I'll say, according to Hinduja and Patchen, these are my, the authors of that book, there are several reasons why adolescents may be tempted to engage in cyberbullying. And so here's the quotation, just like before, um, but instead of having to repeat Hinduja and Patchen here in my in-text citation in these two parentheses, notice all I have is the number 72, that's the page number. I don't need to repeat the names of the authors of that book because I already said it, it would be uh, redundant and a attentive reader will be able to find out who I'm talking about simply by reading the sentence. So if you do that, if you actually uh, you include the information about the author in your own words, then there's no need to repeat that information in your in-text citation. Um, notice with that last quotation also, I don't have quotation marks at the beginning and the end. That's because this quotation is so long that I'm using it as a uh, block quote, what's called a block quote. And here's an example um, in a, uh, of how this is done. Um, if you have a, a quotation that's longer than four lines, um, you can do it as a block quote, which means you'll have uh, tighter margins. There's more space uh, in the margins here. It's right justified, meaning that um, it's uh, both sides are, uh, it may, makes it look like a block. These, are, these uh, should all be lined up here on the right, uh, the end of the lines here. And also, there are no quotation marks at the beginning or end. So those are uh, two things to, or those are three things to keep in mind when you are using a really long quote. But the uh, actual in-text citation is exactly the same, whether you're using a normal conventional kind of quote or a longer block quote in either MLA or APA style. Um, so sometimes online sources, the online source that I found actually did not have a page number. So if you don't have a page number, there are a few different things you can do, but um, the uh, typical process is simply to not include any page number and just use the, um, the author's name in your in-text citation. And so that's what I've done here. I used this quotation from Sutton, and I... Um, I, I stated the quotation, and then I just included the author's name, Sutton, and then a period at the end, and that's it. Um, now, with my, uh, to take it a notch further, notice that, um, or if you went back and you saw the article that I was using, you'll notice that I didn't actually quote Sutton himself, the author of the article. The person that I actually quoted is someone who is quoted in the article. Um, this is Dr. Mike Elsie, who we met a few slides ago. So um, what I should actually do, instead of just call saying that Sutton said these words, because that makes it sound like Sutton actually wrote this, actually, um, the, this quotation, bullying is usually thought of as a group process, et cetera, et cetera, um, is quoted in Sutton. So that's why um, in this version of the uh, citation, I simply say, quoted in Sutton. And if I had a page number, I would put the page number here, but I don't. So I just say quoted in Sutton, end parenthesis, period, onto my next sentence. So I have three sources, and I've actually used them all in my paper, and you saw how I um, cited them in the text of my paper. There was the magazine article by Webley, the book by Hinduja and Patchen, and the article from the online database by Sutton. So now that I've actually written my paper, and I know that I have these all three sources in my paper, I can begin to compile all of my sources into an alphabetical list that will look exactly like this. This is an MLA end text citation, which is known as a works cited page. Um, and notice that I've got all of my information about all of my three sources here. Um, 
Hinduja Samir and Justin W. Patching, Bullying uh, and Beyond the Schoolyard, here's my title, uh, here's my next author, um, here's my third author, all nicely lined up in a row. So some things to notice about this Works Cited page. First of all, there, uh, the sources are listed not in the order that I cited them in my paper, but in alphabetical order. They're organized alphabetically, uh, H, S, W, in alphabetical form. So another thing to notice also is that there's a hanging indent here. Uh, this is with MLA and APA style. They both use uh, what is known as a hanging indent, which means instead of, uh, whereas normally you tab at the beginning of a paragraph here, um, I'm tabbing uh, to indent the lower lines of the works cited page. So it should look, uh, each of the citations should look just like this, uh, where the, um, the first line hangs out right to the end of the left margin, and the any lines that come after that are indented. Um, and then look at some other some other special notes that I uh, that you might as well take note of here. Um, we have uh, when we have multiple authors, the first author is listed by uh, listed last name first. So that's up here, Hinduja Kamo Samir. And then subsequent authors are listed first name first. So uh, the second author, Justin W. Patchen, his name is uh, mentioned in the regular order. Another thing to notice is that uh, whether I'm using the, whether I'm talking about the title of a book, as in this first source, or whether I'm talking about the um, uh, title of a uh, online publication or of a online database, as in the second source, or of a uh, print periodical, as in the third source, I'm always using italics to indicate uh, the titles of these things rather than underlining um, or quotation marks. So those should all be italicized. Also, as I noted, as I noted before, um, you'll see in the uh, um, online source here, Sutton, comma John, I have the article title, the name of the uh, journal, and the volume and issue number, the year, the uh, page number, the name of the database. I say web because it's from the web as opposed to uh, these other sources, which are print sources. And then this last date here, 19 March 2014, that's the access date. That's the date that I actually found this on the internet. Uh, it was actually yesterday. So um, that's all information that you should include in your MLA style works cited page at the end of your paper after you've compiled all of your sources. Um, so sometimes citing these sources will require a little bit of detective work. Um, you have to look through your sources to find all this information that you need to write a complete and accurate uh, works cited page. Um, for books, uh, the important information is usually on the uh, title page, the very first, uh, one of the first pages of the book. Um, and usually if you flip to the back of the title page, that's where you'll find the publisher, the year, the, the year of publication, uh, and uh, the town where, or the city where the publication office is located. Um, online sources generally require a lot more detective work because sometimes they don't include an author, like a Wikipedia entry or something. Um, sometimes they don't have page numbers. Sometimes they don't have dates. Sometimes they don't have anything. Uh, the best, again, the best uh, advice that I can offer you for a situation like this is to follow as closely as you can the guidelines in your um, in your textbook uh, that you're using for your class. And always, you can feel free to ask your instructor if you have any specific questions about how to document your sources. Professors love to answer questions about how to uh, document tricky sources. So always take advantage of their expertise. So that's MLA. Uh, so what if uh, I wrote my paper in MLA and my professor told me that I had done it all wrong and that I was actually supposed to write the paper in APA. This would not be a reason to panic. It would just take a few minutes to go through and reorganize the paper very briefly uh, because, like I say, MLA and APA are not all that different. They include a lot of the same information, but uh, some of the differences uh, you'll be able to tell as we go along. Um, so APA in-text citations include the author's name, the publication year, and the page number. So this is a little bit different from MLA. 
uh, with MLA, we just had the name and the uh, and the page number. Here you'll notice there's something different. So same quotation, 9 out of 10 LGBT students, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the citation down here in red looks very different. Uh, parenthesis, Webley, comma, 2001, that's the year, comma, and then page uh, P period 42 and parentheses. And then again, just like with the MLA, my period is on the outside of the parenthetical in-text citation. Um, so a couple things to note here, there are, in APA, there are commas in between this different, these different pieces of information inside the parentheses. Um, and uh, unlike MLA, they include um, a, a little P, a lowercase p, just to indicate page number and differentiate it from the, uh, from the year. Um, so just like with um, MLA style, when I have an APA style citation and I've actually already mentioned the names of the authors, Hindu John Passion, in the text of my own sentence, then I do not need to include the author's names in the uh, parenthetical in-text citation. I can just jump right to the year, uh, 2009, comma, P, period 72, that's the page number. And notice I don't have to say Hinduja and Pachyon or type it all over again because I already said it and a reader will understand where the information is coming from. That's always the key thing. Does the, will, can the reader get it? Does the reader have enough information to find the source? Um, and if you ask yourself that question every step of the way, you can't go wrong. Um, and again, just like with the other source, if I actually quote a quotation from a source, um, the best thing to do is instead of just saying Sutton 2011 page 9, uh, since I'm quoting not Sutton himself, but this fellow Dr. Mike Elsie, I'm going to, in my citation, I'll say quoted in Sutton, comma 2011, comma, comma P period 9, and parentheses, period for the end of the sentence. And then I'm ready to go on and write my next sentence. So um, as I mentioned before, the uh, the APA end text citation is not referred to as the works cited page, it's referred to as the references page. And, uh, but you'll notice aside from that, uh, this looks pretty familiar from what we saw before. Um, it's in alphabetical order, it includes a lot of the same information, there are some minor details, notably uh, APA style puts a larger emphasis on the year that things were published. So you'll notice that um, in addition to including the year, in the in-text citation, the year is also uh, kind of bumped up from MLA in the in-text in the end-text end citation, and appears right after the names of the authors in parentheses. And some other uh, changes that you'll notice. Uh, similarities specifically are that uh, just like in MLA, where the end-text citations are alphabetical, just like in MLA, we are doing the hanging indent thing. But here are some differences from MLA. Um, in sources with multiple authors, all the names are listed last name first. So whereas before, uh, Hinduja was uh, Hinduja S, and then you know his first name, and then Pachin, here uh, it's always last name first. Um, also, going along with that, authors' first names, you'll notice, are not spelled out. They're just initials, so Hinduja S. Sutton J, Webley K. We don't need their first names in APA style. Um, magazines are identified by volume issue number, volume and issue number instead of month and date. Uh, so this will be important. You always want to make sure that you get those um, those numbers, especially, uh, for example, in Sutton, comma, J. Bullying, epidemic or panic, psychologist. 13, 9, that'll be the volume number and the, the issue number and the volume number. Um, included here in the uh, in uh, the periodical citation. Um, whereas you, you might have noticed in MLA, we had to differentiate whether something was a web source or a print source. In APA, we do not need to do that. Um, there are no quotation marks around the titles of articles. Um, you notice here uh, in the second source, Sun J. Bullying, epidemic, or panic. In MLA, we had quotation marks at the beginning and ending of bullying, epidemic, or panic because that's the uh, title of the um, article that I'm quoting. But in, AP, in APA style, we don't have those quotation marks. It just makes it a little uh, cleaner, a little easier to read. 
And um, notice also uh, specifically in the second source, that's our web source, we did include the URL address, um, HTTP blah, 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 search.proquest.com. And that will allow me to find this article again, or at least to find the database again, so that I can, uh, if I want to go back to this source, either because I'm revising the paper or because I'm a reader who wants to uh, follow up on some of this research, it'll be easy for me to follow, to find that source. So this seems like a lot of information, but actually it's very simple. It's really the easiest part of the entire writing process. The hard part is coming up with uh, things to write about and uh, making your sentences come out uh, articulately. Um, citing sources is um, simply uh, is a very important part, but it's something that's very easy to do once you know the basics. Citing sources is X citing. And if you have any further questions, you should consult the MLA and APA sections of your textbook, whether it's your English textbook or if you're in another class, um, whatever the book is that you're using for that class will usually have detailed instructions about how to cite different kinds of sources. As always, ask your instructor, and uh, here at Goodwin College, we have a lot of very helpful uh, library staff that are always willing to answer student questions about how to cite sources. So thank you very much for listening, and good luck with your research papers. Thank you very much.